in the Magpie newsletter of January 2002, issue number 50, that was published by the Mitcham Common Preservation Society, which today is called the Friends of Mitcham Common, was an article entitled Reminiscences, Radio Telecommunications, by Martin Roberts. He said, Having recently purchased the fascinating and commendable new book, Mitcham Common, by Eric Montague, and bearing in mind the successfully opposed plans to erect a telecommunications mast near the Old Tower Creamery site, I recalled an earlier link with radio telecommunications found in a book on Croydon Airport, the great years 1928 to 1939, which was published by Sutton Libraries and Art Services, which some members may find of interest. It was in 1928 when the Croydon Airport expanded into new buildings in Purley Way, but other connected developments were taking place on Mitcham Common, where, during the winter of 1927 and early 1928, a specially designed building was erected, and a new transmitter station, which, to, which was to play a part in the history of air communications in the 30s, came into existence. The station must have been a cutting-edge technology since the equipment was set up by the Marconi Wireless Telegraph Company under contract to the Air Ministry and consisted of four 103-foot high steel towers with main aerials attached. Apparently others were added when more channels were needed for transmission or frequency experiments. And the whole operation was controlled remotely from the airport via GPO lines. The precise site for this 1930s state-of-the-art transmitter station is unconfirmed, but from the few photographs, also included in the book, and a quotation from one of the then radio operators, Mr Charles Lane, it would seem to have been near Bennington Lane Station, and not far from the Jolly Gardener's Pub, perhaps on what is now the small industrial estate at the end of Red House Road. I would be pleased to hear from any... Mitcham Common Preservation Society members who may recall the transmitter or its exact location, and maybe when it became disused and removed. Certainly Mr Montague may be interested for the next edition. How strange that there seem to be few calls of protest about radio masts in the 1930s. Martin Roberts repeated his appeal in the autumn 2011 edition of the Magpie newsletter, Magpie number 78. And this prompted a reply, which was published in the following newsletter, November 2011, issue number 79. A historical mystery from a magpie reader, in search of the lost transmitter. In the last issue, Martin Roberts appealed for help in finding the location of the transmitter station that was built in 1928 con to control air traffic at the new Croydon Airport. He felt it might have been on Mitcham Common, perhaps in the vicinity of the One Island Pond, but it was not here. Two people who made contact, Peter Skinner from the Croydon Airport Society and Mr Jenner, who spent his childhood in this area, both pinpointed an area between Red House Road and Brookmead Road. Mr Jenner recalls a large area of flat ground here, used as a sports ground, but which was taken over by the Air Ministry. Building took place and security fencing installed. He does not mention radio masts, this is in fact the area referred to by Charles Lane in the book Croydon Airport, The Great Days, as lying on the edge of Mitcham Common near Bennington Lane Station and not far from the Jolly Gardener's pub. The pub at the end of the Red House Road was the Jolly Gardener's. The transmitter station itself was a very distinctive building, square, one storey high and flat roofed. The librarian at Sutton Library kindly found the 1932 Ordnance Survey map and there it was. Nothing remains today and the site is occupied by a large HGV testing station. Here's what the map looked like reproduced in the Magpie newsletter. But we can actually go to the National Library of Scotland website where these Ordnance Survey maps have been digitised and made available online. Thus saving ourselves a trip to the library in Sutton I suppose. This map has a reuse of CCBY, which means we can do anything we like with it, as long as we tell people that we got it from the National Library of Scotland. And I will write that in the description, that this is reproduced by permission of the National Library of Scotland. Anyway, here's the Bennington Lane Station. This is map is revised 1932, published in 1935. 
and this is the area referred to. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually show the bases of any transmitters. So could this be then that the map was produced just before the transmitters were erected? There is, however, an aerial photograph. So we go to the Historic England website and we've gone to the home page under images and books find photos the aerial photo explorer let's use the map to go to Bellington Bellington Sutton the map looks very crowded because we've got the options of switching the layers to be the oblique aerial photographs which we're interested in and the vertical aerial photographs which in this case we're not interested in so we can turn that off that makes the map look a bit clearer so it's centered on Bennington but let's go up to Bennington Lane Halt or Bennington Lane tram stop as it is now and we're looking for a view that takes in this area here what does this one look like Very clear. Let's try something else. There are a few here. Let's try this one. So this photograph was taken twelfth of October nineteen forty nine. Clearly the railway line. Where's the train station? Try another one. Ah. Can't quite see the train station, it's slightly off. We, we, we'll find a better one in a minute, but in the meantime, there's a couple of transmitters there. See what this view looks like. in the foreground. Try another view. There we go. There's the square building referred to. Uh, only one level of zoom. We have one, two, three, four, five transmitters. Oh, six. There's another one there. We can see the shadows. So, this is Mitcham Common. Railway line. Shame it doesn't show the train station. So, there are the transmitters. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. over here. Might as well look at all of these. So this is the Brookmead estate. This is the train line. So Bennington Lane tram sorry, Bennington Lane train station on this this photograph, not a tram. <laughs> sorry. But it's now Bennington Lane tram stop. It'll be there. It's behind this building, can't see the actual station building, but never mind. Bennington Lane swerves off that way. This is the One Island Pond area. Which has now got loads of hills on it because of rubbish dumping. Hmm. Last one. Yeah, there are the transmitters over there. So, there we have it. Now we actually have a photograph of where the transmitters were. Well, I hope you found this interesting. Thank you for watching. Press the like button if you could, if you liked it. And subscribe, and I'll do some more. Thank you very much.